Hey guys, coming at you today with a delicious ice cream bar recipe. One of my favorite things, coffee and caramel and chocolate. So today we're making a chocolate dipped caramel macchiato ice cream bar. So let's get started. Now to start off this recipe, if you have not seen my sweet and dense milk recipe, I will link it up there for you because we need it for this recipe right here. This is my sweet and dense milk. I made it a while ago. I had it in the fridge. You can also freeze it, but it is at room temperature now, so there are no more butter clumps in it. I need 250 grams or milliliters. I found that they measure the same, but people get angry when I don't say milliliters. Instead, I say grams. So if you haven't made this, one single batch will be enough for this recipe. I always make a big batch because I can freeze it and it takes about the same amount of time and you get much more and you can use it for tons of recipes. So I was supposed to start with heavy cream. So <laughs> that's that for right now. And then we need 300 milliliters of heavy cream. Of course, all the rest of my things are dirty. So I'm gonna have to do 200 and 100. About a cup and a quarter heavy cream and that's going into the bowl. I'm only making a half batch. Normally I make 24 of these at a time but I want to make another recipe so I can only do half batch. So cream in there. It's a very simple recipe. If you have seen I'll link up my regular plain ice cream bars up there. The sweetness level on this is up to you. I added extra for this because of coffee. So always try it before you get it all said and done. Doing 15 grams of a powdered Monkford erythritol. This helps it not be too soft because you got allulose in your sweet and dense milk. 15 grams, which should be two tablespoons-ish. Then I have on my recipe 15 drops of caramel stevia. I don't have drops right now. I These are drops, but it doesn't come out like a dropper. Some do, some don't. So I'm just gonna do a couple squirts of this caramel stevia. And I'm going to do a little bit of vanilla stevia. Again, this doesn't really drop. It's just kind of a squirt. Then I also have caramel extract I think I'm going to add to this. I made this recipe before, but I wanted to spruce it up a little bit more. Along with that, to make it coffee, I love this stuff. You can get it on Amazon. And if you buy like three or five of them, you get like a deal. I make my mocha mix for camping with this. I'll try and find that video and I'll link it up there for you. I have made a video of us camping and using this and the recipe was there. But I love it. It's super delicious and we can use it for tons of recipes too. I also use this for my tiramisu. Any kind of coffee flavored anything I use this stuff. So a tablespoon and a half of instant espresso powder. You can also use just instant coffee, but you're not gonna get as much of a kick from that as you are from this. We're gonna whip this up and then we're gonna stream in the sweet and condensed milk. And then I'm gonna put in eh, maybe one teaspoon of caramel extract. Oh, I also have coffee extract. So extracts really do come in handy because they have so many different ones now. You can obviously taste it after this and see how sweet it is. And then you're going to add the sweet and condensed milk, which is going to make it even sweeter. I'm going to taste it here. I just realized my original recipe was only 15 grams for double the recipe, so this might be a little bit too sweet. <laughs> sweet, but it's bitter with the coffee, so that's good. While that's going, we gotta get our molds ready. So this is gonna make 10 to 12 popsicles. So we gotta get these guys all set to go. I just rinsed them, so we're gonna have to dry them out. Make sure you have these on some kind of tray that will fit in your freezer. Make sure they're all nice and clean and dry. The popsicle sticks are ready, because I have put them into the freezer and forgotten to put the popsicle sticks in. Speed this up a little bit. I'm going to give this a little scrape down and then once this is to soft peaks we can stream in our sweetened and some milk. I 
stop that while you get the rest of this out because I have over whipped it before. You don't want to do that. So while you're doing this, you might not concentrate on what is in the bowl and you could over whip it. And that's a disaster because this stuff tastes so good. You hate wasting it. You can always make a caramel butter, I guess. Caramel coffee butter. <laughs> Give that one little more whip here. Nice and thick and creamy. At this point, you can also taste it for sweetness, caramel flavor, etc. This looks delicious. I'm gonna give it a little whip around. You can see a lot of times it doesn't get like to the very bottom. It's not like super thick down there. Mm. So good. Okay. Now we gotta fill all our cavities. I'm gonna clean up here because the lighting over here is better. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, let's fill these guys. The biggest thing with this is making sure that the cavities have no holes in them. You gotta really smush the ice cream down. Make sure you get in all the crevices. You still, I'm still probably gonna miss some. Do the best you can. It's gonna taste good no matter what, so. Oh, I really hate having odd numbers. I'm going to end up having 11. Oh, another tip too. When things are frozen, the flavor and sweetness dulls. So you always want to make it sweeter than you think you're going to need it and more flavorful. Pretty much it. I'm not gonna have anywhere near enough for another one, so I'm just gonna snack on the rest. <laughs> so this has to go into the freezer for probably overnight, at least eight hours. I'm not coming back today though to do this, so yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. You gotta put the popsicle sticks in though, can't forget. These popsicle molds will be linked below for my Amazon. I do like these ones because I have um, freezers that aren't the side by side, so if you have a side by side, the up and down ones would probably be better, but putting this in there, you really gotta tap the hell out of it to like get it down into the mold of those. So just be aware of that. These, I like to like pull up. Cause otherwise they go like down. You don't want that. It's best to have this on a sheet tray that doesn't have such high sides on it. Easier to get the sticks in. Or you can put them up like this. While you stick them in. I actually have two sets of these. They come in set of 12. The macros on this are all going to depend on the chocolate you use pretty much. You can do no chocolate on them. It'd be delicious just the way they are. But we got to dip them. No. So we'll be back when we got to dip these guys. Time to finish our coffee ice cream bars. First off, we got to take them all out of here. I like to get another pan with parchment. It makes it easier. Careful when you take them out. Push from the bottom gonna be soft. Very soft ice cream recipe. Super delicious. You like that one broke a little bit? I'm really not sure how the stand-up popsicle molds will work. This recipe being so soft as it is. Even as a professional, see you can see the popsicle stick. So you want to make sure you Put it in really nice and straight because that'll happen. I guess this is going to be the one we're going to end up trying because it's missing a big chunk. Put these back in the freezer while you get your chocolate coating done. Now people have asked me before, especially when I come out with some kind of chocolate coating video where I just use Lily's chocolate chips or keto chocolate that I have, about making your own keto chocolate. There are a couple different ways to do it and I will eventually have a whole video on it, but today it's kind of like making our own keto chocolate because we're going to use baker's chocolate which is unsweetened so the only ingredients in here is chocolate so we're using this and then some coconut oil to make it nice and thin coat of chocolate on the outside of our bar unlike some of them that are so thick they just crack and break off which i hate so i actually tested to make sure that we didn't get a super thick coat of chocolate but it was like perfectly melty on the outside 
And then I'm adding powdered monk fruit erythritol blend. You can add a combination of that and stevia or whatever else you want. To cover these bars, we should need about three ounces, which this is one carb for a half an ounce. So that'll add six carbs to our ice cream bars. So not even one per. So one ounce, two ounce, three ounces. So the best way to do this, you want to have it in a nice thin shards. This is how we used to chop chocolate in pastry school. Go one way and then you do the next corner and then you do the next corner. It helps to have a nice sharp knife. So when you go and pour warm coconut oil over this, it'll melt easily. So we need three ounces total. Should cover all of our ice cream bars. To that, we are adding 60 grams of coconut oil. This is a refined because I didn't want coconut flavor. It's not the best for you. The best is unrefined. Oh, we're not supposed to add it to that. <laughs> Alright, I'm worrying about other things. Six are already there, so we need 54. We're going to heat up the coconut oil separately. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to heat this in the microwave until it's nice and hot. We're going to pour it over our chocolate and we'll measure out our sweetener into here too. Sweetness level is up to you. You can always add a little bit of stevia if you want it a little bit sweeter. You want the coconut oil warm enough to melt all this, but not too hot so that it takes forever to cool down because you want to dip your ice cream around 88 degrees. 122, so I think we'll need it a little bit warmer to melt all that chocolate. Okay, we're at 160, so I'm going to pour it over our chocolate. Hope that is hot enough. If not, we're going to have to put it in the microwave and warm it little by little. It's already down to 87, so we're going to have to put it in the microwave, I think. Whenever I melt chocolate or any kind of coating, 50% power. 10 second intervals until you're at the right temperature. Usually I do around 90 degrees and then let it cool down to around 88. I stir after each like 10 15 seconds. Do a little temp check. We're at 89 already. So I'm gonna go kinda high to get all the rest of this melted. Still only at 87. And we're finally getting some melting action. We're at 94. So I think I'm gonna let it sit for now. I only got a couple little pieces left. Chocolate. If it gets too low and then there's still chunks, we'll heat it up some more. But we should be about ready to dip. Make sure you check your sweetness level before you start dipping. I'm going to have to give it another little blast because we still have a couple of chunkers in there. And we're at 88, so a little bit more. It's mostly melted now. We're a little bit warm, but I'm going to add a little bit of caramel stevia. Because I think it needed to be a little bit sweeter. I'm almost out of the caramel. I'm going to add a couple drops of regular stevia. See what our temp is. 91. Almost ready to go to dip. Sweet enough for me now. It's always easier if you have more chocolate than you need. This is probably going to be a pain because it's just the exact right amount of chocolate to dip those. It's always easier if you have a bunch of chocolate. See how hard this is going to be on camera. <laughs> well, with this thing in front of my face. Let's see. Okay. To dip, I lean it this way, down like that, like that, like that, like that, and that's it. Let it drip. And put it down. If you have any mess ups, re dip a little bit. Because it's frozen, it should freeze pretty fast. It's also very soft, so you gotta be careful. And the last one that is our taster one. Save that one to the end. <laughs> okay, so it looked weird. And then with the extra, you can always do a little drizzle. 
We counted it all in the macro, so we just put some more down at the bottom. Here we go. All of our ice cream bars. Let these chill for a little bit and then we're gonna try it. We got our delicious plate of keto chocolate dipped caramel macchiato ice cream bars. Can't wait to dig in. Should be nice and soft and kind of melt. Or thin enough. That it breaks but stays on. Mm. Huh, it's gonna be hard not to eat this whole thing. I really shouldn't because I already had my lunch. It's so good. And it's super soft and creamy inside. They're still pretty soft because we just dipped them today. I didn't keep them in like overnight. They'll get a little bit stiffer overnight or eight hours or so, but they're so delicious. Coffee, caramel, and chocolate. Mm, you can't beat it. I hope you guys enjoy this keto ice cream bar recipe. It is so good. If you're a coffee lover, caramel macchiato, you can make any flavor you want. A vanilla latte, you can make, <laughs> the options are endless. Add some chocolate chips, add anything you like that's keto into these ice cream bars and you'll have a delicious summer treat. Let me know in the comments below what you guys come up with. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links in the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below. Thank you for subscribing. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll be back with more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.